San Bernardino, California, and I was born to play music. As a matter of fact, I got my first uh, piano lessons from my mother, Mickey Cruz, and she showed me how to do the proper scale, and I fell in love with music after that. That's amazing. Aren't you a lucky boy? Now, I also know from a previous episode of Radio Venice, the very first one you did back in October of 2017, I think it was, that you wrote a song for Willie Nelson? Yes, I did. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you ended up getting it to Willie Nelson? I didn't get it to him, but I remember his sons were doing shows out here. And uh, uh, it was an interview that I did for um, Venice Stories. And uh, I wrote a song just for Willie Nelson that I thought that he might like. And uh, I had hoped that by putting it out there, maybe somebody would have saw it and said, yeah, let's, let's hear it. Let's give it a try. And I might do it today uh, on the show. Ooh, that would be special. I was going to try to play it for you, but um, that's enough. Ooh, that would be really special because then we can hear it again. Mm -hmm. And then it, that would be awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you are the founder of something called Venice Street Legends. Would you like to explain what that is? Well, um, after being on the beach playing many days out of the week for many years, uh, I was able to uh, find a a bass player, upright bass player, and we were doing Johnny Cash covers at the time. We needed a a, a name. The bass player was was here since the 70s, so I thought, well, you're a legend. You're like a Venice street legend because that's all he did was play on the streets. And uh, uh, so I thought, oh, the Venice street le legends. Vessel, BSL, you know, just like kind of just uh, gelled together. So we kept it, and uh, it's been that way ever since. That's beautiful. What do you think to start? And, and how many people are involved in it? Well, there's two, basically. We've had uh, various drummers of uh, the years, but the upright bass and the electric guitar has been uh, the, the makeup uh, pretty much of the band. Oh, who doesn't like the upright bass and the electric guitar? Oh, yes. And then for Johnny Cash, that would be uh, the, the, the right instrumentation. So, um, can everybody hear us? Can anybody hear us? Is anybody watching? <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we've got some more questions because you will be watching it somewhere along the way. Sorry about my hat. The sun is just so bright. Isn't it? it is. We should be sitting. Anyway, moving on. Next question. <laughs> Are you ready? How did you get so good at country? Well, I was born with this voice, and uh, when I first started, I only did lead. I used to back up a blues singer. The band was called the Muddy Bottom Blues Boys, years before the Venice Street Legends. And I played uh, blues lead guitar. I learned how to do it. You play every day, every day, every day. Well, he moved on to New Orleans, and I had I wanted to continue with my band, so I started a blues band called La Bouche. We had a three we had a three piece. But they also went on their, their way, so that's when the Venice Street Legends came in. And that's when I said, I'm going to do Johnny Cash because I love Johnny Cash's style, his voice. And I was able to kind of 
fit right in there in the same kind of number as, as he was. So I said, let's do it. And um, when I was 16, I, the first song, country song I learned was A Boy Named Sue. And I loved it. You know, it was a funny song, but it was just like How did graphic. it go? Uh, well, my dad had left home when I was three, and he didn't leave much to my mom and me but this old guitar and an empty bottle of booze. So it mentioned the guitar, which, you know, that's what I loved. Uh, my dad actually gave me a guitar when I was 16, and my grandma gave me her guitar when I was like 12. So uh, that's when I decided to to, to uh, um, invest the time in guitar. Before that, my mom paid for trumpet lessons uh, from Lear's Music in San Bernardino, $1.50 a day. And we went once a week, and I loved it. I didn't miss a day, and I got put in the advanced class right away. So I was inspired by music for, at a very young age. A very young age, indeed. Six the piano, 12 the guitar from your grandmother. Now, did your grandmother play music? Yes. My grandpa and her used to sing Spanish songs, uh, amateur-wise. They weren't professionals, but we do music out of love. We don't do it because we're going to get rich or famous. That is the greatest satisfaction for doing music, the love for it, no matter what happens. For the love of God. Yes. The glory of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I already asked you about the Willie Nelson song. By the way, that was called Sweet as Milk and Honey. Right. You want to get it to Willie Nelson. It's a beautiful song. Um, hmm. What was the first song that you learned to play and sing? Uh, that would be, um, oh, uh, uh, Horse with No Name. Oh. Yeah, two chords, you know, back and forth. Was pretty and a G. Easy. It's a D, right? right? right. <laughs> well, you play, you're going to get you in our band. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yes, please. I love the music. No, I don't know how to play music. So it was so simple. I was in, I think I was in uh, high school at the time. And there were many guitar players. What high school did you go to? San Bernardino High School. Shout out to the. Shout out San Bernardino. All right. Uh -huh. So uh, there was many guitar players there, and I was actually in a class. Uh, for summer that I took, they showed us all the chords, and, and uh, I was so diligent, I was able to, to learn right away uh, uh, how to uh, manipulate the guitar for, for the best sound. And I have a secret. If you really want to learn uh, the guitar fast, learn the Hotel California in the key of A minor, because it has all the chords there. It's a popular song. Everybody knows it. And once you learn that song, you can have like about six chords down right away that are important for most music. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So you want, you remember how to sing a, a horse with no name? Can I remember how to play it? Um, yeah. Um, I do remember. Uh, I think that's so interesting. What, what, who did somebody tell you to teach it or to, or to play it? Please? I think it was popular at the time. It was so popular that, you know, and then it was easy. And I think I saw another guitarist playing it and I decided, oh yeah, two chords, you know. <gasps> well, I've been through the desert that on a horse with no name. name. It's so good to be that out time. of the rain. So, you know, and it rhymes quickly, so you can kind of memorize it. That was probably that. 1973. 1973. You weren't even born then, I bet. No, I was not. <laughs> I was, say I was born yesterday. <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, who are you, Mr. Greg Cruz, and how do you fit into this world? Well, you know, music has been a big part of my life, and uh, I've also joined the Navy to get out. I went to uh, Nashville to record with a, uh, a country singer, although it didn't get uh, follow through in the production, but it was a wonderful experience. Wow. And that was another inspiration for country music. Okay. Uh, yeah. yes. That's a good one. So, wait. so that's how I fit in, <laughs> is that I went so from uh, <laughs> where I am at right now, which is, I love story songs. Country music has story right. songs, you know, and you don't have to be um, a virtuoso, although I like to add a little bit extra. I throw lead guitar fills in with my uh, chord progression. So it's a little bit tougher, but it's extra and I love doing it. Ooh. I think maybe we're going to see a lot of that today. Really looking forward to hearing you on Radio Venice. I went through and if you haven't, go back to the very first episode that he plays in Radio Venice and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, music. What was your first concert that you went to? Oh, you know, that was Earth, Wind and Fire. Ooh. And uh, it was so beautiful. They did a song called That's the Way of the World. And it was one of my favorites, still is one of my favorites. And the first slow dance I ever had with it was to that song. I fell in love with the girls, but she was from a different city. But I always remembered her and the song. And to this day, I 
you know, I think about that. My first love was to that song, although it was unrequited, but it's all right. It's inspirational. Oh, that's beautiful. I love inspiration. Well, what was your first, you know, oh, never mind. What was your first album that you purchased? Or oh, that was Chicago, Chicago Transit Authority. Is that the one with the big P on it? Yes. It's like an orangey color oh, and the beige background? You know, that's right. It was the first one with, the first, <laughs> with a lot of their big, big hits, beginnings. And does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really know what time it is? That's perfect for today's world. Oh, it is. It sure is. It sure is. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Can you share with us one of your most earliest childhood memories? Yes, I can. I was uh, three years old. And on the top of our refrigerator, we had a radio that uh, we played music and I couldn't reach it, but the first song I heard was Sleepwalk by Santo and Johnny. And so that was one of the first conscious memories that I remember was wow. the song. Wah, 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 wah. And I just looked up to the whole song, stared at it, and that became uh, the soundtrack in my heart, in my mind, in my life. Sleepwalk by Santo and Johnny. At three years old? Three years old. And you remember that? Right. That was very impressive. Right. Look, I was born in 56. It came out in 59. I did all the research, all the Googling. So I said, oh, I must have been three years old, you know, when that happened. That's inspiration. So when you say you were born for music, yes. you were born for music. I believe I so. I mean, I don't remember anything when I was three years old unless it's a picture that I've seen that my mom showed me. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I do. You were an inspiration for music for sure. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you ready for um, maybe something a little more deep? Absolutely. Like, are you ready? Okay. What do you know to be absolutely 100% to be true in this one? We only have this moment. We don't have the past. We don't have the future. We have now. So let's inspire ourselves from the moment. I know that for a fact. That is beautiful. Very beautiful. Yes. Inspiration is important. Passions. Here we are. Yes. 2021. <laughs> Passions put forward. <laughs> still here. Still here among the whatever's going on in this world, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, do you have any tattoos? I don't. Are you going to get one? No. Really? No. Why not? Um, because I would, maybe I haven't been inspired enough to find one. If it would be, I think it would be uh, um, uh, uh, maybe a picture of my mom. Oh. She's my big inspiration. I would guess that. Well, that mm. question was coming up. I had to move it down the road. Mm. <laughs> um, what are the happiest lyrics or songs that you've ever written? Uh, let me see. Uh, this is a song I wrote called 60s The New 30. And it goes, I ain't over the hill. I ain't ready for no rocking chair. And I can still pay all the bills. Still got all of my long brown hair. So, and that's basically the start of it. That's, you know, that's, it's all about 60 being the new 30. So go ahead and be young, you know, go, go ahead and enjoy life, you know, um, in your younger self. Oh, I love that. You have to, you have to like take that moment. Can you sing it again, Paul? I ain't over the hill. I ain't ready for a rocking chair. And I can still pay all the bills. Still got all of my long brown hair, and I'm looking for a new young girlfriend, because <laughs> I'm an old fella feeling fine. 60's a new 30, and my baby's 29. <laughs> and that's actually the one I wrote for um, Willie Nelson. The, the other one was one of the first songs I wrote, um, but and I considered maybe sending both of them, but that's the one too. Wow. Wrote for so you, you write a lot of country music. I do, I do. I like I like to write. I got a few songs I've written. Do you have um one of the saddest lyrics or songs that you've ever written? Oh, um Love is not a song. It's being right, pretending that you're wrong. It's not honesty or what a fool believes. How can I explain the reason I'm in pain? The reasons I complain about love. Wow. That's a sad song to me. I so understand that. I mean, everybody wants love. Everybody wants to be loved. And everybody also can, I mean, say complain about love. It's not necessarily true. But yeah, like, it hurts, so you complain about it. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, friendship, love is as close as you can get. And you know what? At the most 
basic a common denominator. We are human beings. That we should love each other as human beings without even thinking past that. You know, the yeah. beauty of you is that you're here with me right now. And, and even if that's all it is, it's still a beautiful time. You know what I'm saying? Still yes. a beautiful. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a <laughs> I'm pleasure. So honored. Wait, I have more questions. <laughs> Should we um, end it and restart it and see if the sound works? It's up to you. You're the boss. You're the boss. All right. Well, I'm going to do that then. We're going to come back to you in about 10 minutes. Stay tuned. Mr. Gregory Cruz. Greg Cruz, been a street legend. Sing the scene again. Love is not a song. It's being right. Pretending that you're wrong. It's not honesty. Or what a fool believes. How can I explain the reasons I complain about love? Beautiful. Bye, y'all. We'll see you in a few minutes.